Broadway's biggest shows, Broadway's hottest tickets, they're all right here, along with Broadway's hottest stars. I'm Tamsin Fidel. This is a Broadway show. Let's get going. He's not throwing away his shot at telling dad jokes anyway. I had a chance to catch up with Broadway's Alexander Hamilton this time, Miguel Cervantes, to talk about his corny sense of humor, his family, and a whole lot more. <laughs> Well, let's start with your jokes anyway. Okay. Cause, yes. uh, so you got you got a book of jokes. My wife gave me a book of jokes last Christmas, like yeah. two two years ago, and I started bringing them in and telling some people jokes, and then it kind of became a thing where I, I found different places during the show, uh, to tell you know some wardrobe folks, folks uh, the the cast, and then it became sort of like a part of the track. You know, part of the Hamilton track is like first you do my shot, then you tell a joke. <laughs> Then you do. Uh, I don't think you, know. you should tell Lynn that. that I'm, I'm suggesting. Well, he's, maybe we're going to write it into the into the track. And then uh, one of our wardrobe gals, uh, Lisa, uh, came down with uh, the medical situation, and so she had to she had to sort of step away for a little while. And she told uh, the folks down in the wardrobe, she said, "You know, one of the biggest things that I miss is being able to hear Miguel come and tell these dumb jokes." So we started videoing them for her to send them to her. Just that was it. And then it became this sort of thing we put on Instagram, and everyone sort of is enjoying it. Why do scientists believe that you couldn't tell when a pterodactyl was going to the bathroom? Well, because the P is silent. <laughs> it's kind of part of one of my things, you know, like everyone has a little thing, and so I get to. I, I like your thing. Yeah, I like yeah. Your thing. And listen, if we can add a little bit of laughter, you know, in something that, you know, yeah. after years and years and years, it becomes kind of what you do. It's just step here, move there, put this shirt on. And now I get a little, something a little different. A little, I don't get to mess around on stage. So maybe, maybe yeah, you, you get have a little. your own little performance <laughs> exactly. going on backstage. Exactly. What do you call a fish with a bow tie? I don't know. Sophisticated. 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 I did it. I would have never thunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's great. <laughs> you know, you've been on stage a lot. You've been with a lot of uh, c communities of actors. What makes this one uh, particularly special? Do you think it's the show itself? Do you think it's the people that are attracted to the show? What do, what do you think it is that makes this one different, not only for the audience, but for you? You know, when I was a kid, when I was in high school or college and thinking, I just want to be in a, I want to do this. This is what sure. I want to do. It wasn't this. It was this, but it was. What I mean is, this you know, is okay. this is pretty good, but it, it was, I just want to be out there singing and, 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 and performing and, and using my sort of gifts. But Hamilton took on this sort of life beyond theater and beyond performing. The messages that we, as the people we are, how we look, way, the way we sound, who we are as individuals outside of the theater all become part of this experience that is affecting young people it's affecting older folks, it's affecting all kinds of different walks of life that, you know, I, I didn't realize that. It's affecting history. It's, and it is, it is becoming a historical and a, and a phenomenon in our, in, our, in our time, and we get to be part of that. And that's what makes this special. Is there one scene, moment, conversation, song that you look forward to every night? You know, it's, it's a great question because there's so many moments in the show that can change based on who's performing. You know, if there's a different actor or actress up on stage in one of the roles, the energy's a little different. So I always enjoy um, the cabinet battles because there's just a little bit of an energy that that we're allowed to sort of bring in the audience because they are now part of the, the, the meeting. So. I, I enjoy that a lot because I can sort of look at people and when people smile and I catch their eye and it, it really sort of, those are the, the small things that change from night to night. Uh, I really love uh, Dear Theodosia. You know, I'm a, I'm a parent, I'm a father. It's a moment where I'm very close to the audience and sometimes I can catch, they, I don't think they see, think I can see them, but they'll like reach over and cuddle their child while I'm singing. And I can see them do that, you know, and I, I, I make a joke because I can feel that. Sure. I, you know, when it's just, sure. I call acting, it's like a superpower, right? So I'm up there, I'm just singing this song, Alexander Hamilton, but I make this parent like reach over these teenagers and they'll grab them and reach them over. And I'm like, ah, it's not, you gotta stop, you know? And so, I can see you. yeah, it's, and I can see you cuddling and I, I don't like it because it makes me want to cuddle my son and, and, and my children. And those are the moments that are, I really sort of cherish. Because every night it's different. Every, every night every is different. different. Every, every night is different. Every night is a different cuddle, a different yeah. person, a different <laughs> emotion. Exactly. Uh, how is the family doing? Uh, great. My family has gone through a lot over, you know, at the end of Chicago, we were dealing with so many things in our own personal life and our loss. And when we lost Adelaide, that affected so many parts of who we are. My wife, Kelly, and I, what our family meant. And, and, and in that same exact time, I've been asked to come start here in New York 
And so then there's the transition out of Chicago and what our family looks like. And then, oh, by the way, let's shut down sure. for a couple years in the middle of that. We realize that, you know, grief is a universal feeling. We are all, we all experience our grief in individual ways, but we can sort of be together in the fact that everyone feels something and feels it in their own way. And as the years have gone by, my wife started writing. She's written a book about sort of Adelaide and, 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 and grief. And I've been so amazed by her and able to sort of use this tragedy in our lives uh, to, 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 to try to help someone. It's been, it's been a trying and, and, and in some ways very beautiful time in our lives. And then we, uh, somewhere in there, uh, decided that uh, we were gonna adopt a little girl yes and so that sort of became another <laughs> crazy change in our life people say all the time like oh you were helping this child you were you were saving this little girl's life i'm like no 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 this is a uh, this is this is this is for everyone this is for all of us i sort of cautiously say that we are doing okay